Here in Kurdistan, like other countries where FGM is practiced, female circumcision, known as katana, is not spoken of openly. <laughs> We need influential religious leaders to make that clear to people that this is not a religious application. In my community, FGM is practiced as a religious requirement. As a campaigner, they believe that you are just introducing Western churches. For me to convince them, I had to now bring in people who are highly respected within the community. Grassroots activists travel far and wide, searching out key religious and community leaders to persuade them to join the cause. I know for sure, if religious leaders can stand up with us, this thing will be a history. But it's a daunting task trying to persuade powerful men of faith. We are on our way to meet Imam Fatih and he's the most influential Imam in the country. I am very nervous about meeting him. I care about you. You are fighting female circumcision and say that it's not Islamic. No one who fear Allah mm -hmm. says circumcision is not Islamic. Hurting people, torturing people, it's not right in Islam. You are this, I'm the details going to... of FGM are so secret. When the suffering it causes is revealed to religious leaders, most are so shocked they change their minds about the practice. You know, you are very influential and you're very credible. We must educate people about female circumcision. The power of the medical truth is why we always start our training academies with a doctor's presentation. FGM, female genital mutilation. The pictures were so horrible, I didn't want to show This is what I see every day. Persuading the community is a good start. Are you with me? Everything helps, from the smallest congregation to the might of the national media, which we have found reaps the most spectacular results. Du Forum national sur les conséquences médicales des mutilations génitales féminines. In Mali, the FGM taboo was broken when religious leaders spoke out on television for the first time. La déclaration d'un imam à la première chaîne du Mali dit que l'excision n'est pas une obligation religieuse musulmane. Ça, c'est une grande satisfaction. The media has proven to be a very powerful tool to correct the misconceptions about religion and FGM. Because religion has been used to perpetrate the practice. Whatever has been done by religion can only be undone by religion. And who are the gatekeepers? The religious leaders. Muslim leaders have delinked the Islamic religion from female genital mutilation, saying the act is sinful. The circumcision of women is not allowed in Islam. The general public take it to be an Islamic practice, and that's very wrong. GMC has conducted many studies into the power of using religious leaders on the media, including here in the Garis Balay IDP camp near Mogadishu. Following the deaths of several young women from FGM, we set up a radio broadcast to measure the reaction. 
All over the camp, people listened as a respected imam delinked religion from the practice. Changing attitudes using the media has been the focus of GMC's three-year study in Tana River, Kenya, and the results are unprecedented. Following intense media campaigns, people's attitudes towards and acceptance of the worst form of FGM fell from 89% to 5% in just three years. Honestly speaking, engaging religious leaders is key towards ending FGM.